Thank you for such a lovely introduction, and thank you for inviting me here. I can't imagine a better way to spend a Saturday with music, art, and of course poetry. Um, so, um, I'm going to read a few poems from my book as slow as possible, and then maybe finish with a new poem. And, uh, in, the, in this book, uh, there's a sequence called 12 Months, uh, basically, there are 12 poems, one for each month. Since we're in January, I think it's actually a good point to start. Um, this poem called Janus. So, um, Janus is the god, a Roman god with two heads, two headed gods. I think a lot of Romans actually have them by the door because Janus is supposed to be the god for beginning and ending, for portals, doors, all around us. Given it is a year of beginning and possible exit, um, I think it's a fitting beginning. Janus. Of the front door yet to be repainted, probably this brain in hick blue. Of the poached door newly painted in a draft washed white. Of the kitchen door ajar smell of a pork shoulder roasting in garlic and fennel seeds, of cat, of cat flap reserved for the sleek, handsome pantalimon and regally neurotic Aphrodite, of concrete and abstract things like change, passages, transitions, like climbing up the stairs to discover the things within human control, like frame within frame, the variations of blue and sea that make the beak of a hummingbird fit for a curlew, and the things beyond, like an unexpected phone call on a Sunday morning, disrupted lovemaking, the loss and tears that follow, thoughts of exit and entrance clouding over the mind on a cold sunny day where everything has a shadow to make meaning of. I'm going to move from um, the Roman God to a different kind of religion. Uh, in the middle of the book um, is, is a sequence called Genesis and I was trying to we write the book of Genesis in using Chinese mythological uh, materials and um, is written in the language of the King, King James authorized edition and since we have wind music here tonight I think I'm going to start with um, chapter 2 of Genesis which is about the creation of human beings and also about music. Genesis chapter 2 Thus the sky and the land flourished and all the host of them and there was no trace of human beings and the goddess Nua appeared with Fuzi her brother and husband and they had the face of humans but the body of serpents. And Nua wandered the lonesome sky and the lonesome land and pitied their lonesomeness. And she learned the lessons of the wind, planted her hands in the yellow river, healed the earth and said, let us make humans in our image after our likeness. So she created humans in her image, molded the earth into shapes without detail or features. And her pace was slow, and so many died before they lived. So Nua fed a reed into the wet earth, flicked it high with her arm, and turned the earth into the living. Although her pace was quicker, the human beings that she made were without details or features. So Nua deployed, employed the wind which divided men and women, drew their faces and gave them limbs. 
Would help the wind low the reed flew sky high, and newer labors multiplied seventyfold. And newer saw the living she she had made, and beheld that it was good. But human beings were lonesome creatures, without language. Men and women cannot know how to love and care for each other. So Nua borrowed the language of the wind, plucked reeds, bound them into vertical pipes, and created an instrument. She called it Sang, the Living. And she taught men and women to borrow the language of the wind, which was the language of music, which was the language of love. And men and women used the fifty chords of Sang for their emotions. And where there was music, there was harmony among the living. And Nua saw the men and women who spoke in harmony with the wind, and she granted them a new way of living, a union of two called wedlock. And Nua learned the lessons of the wind and heard the happy and sad music of men and women who were once a grain of earth on a hollow reed. Um, the title of this book, as low as possible, I borrowed it from um, the American composer John Cage. He wrote a piece um, um, called "As Low as Possible." It's an organ piece, but in in the composition, he actually didn't specify how long that piece should be played. So uh, currently, there is a rendition in Germany, which started in September 2001, and it's going to be played for 639 years. So this piece is going to end in 2640. Um, so this poem is about this piece of music, as low as possible. Having breathed 639 years. What remains of us will return to sing Bardi in Hobbestad, the hometown of the first permanent pipe organ, in the 640th year of the third millennium, whether or not Earth has been forsaken. The exact month, date, and time are yet to be confirmed, but we, stranger still. We'll gather in the right transept, first to listen to that last note sustained by sandbags on pedals. Its ghostly, peculiar ring in the air, reminding us of ourselves. Then, if breath can still be held, to witness the sandbags being gently removed, all at once. So that this time we can hear the finished sound, the tinnitus recalling absence. Um, since we're in gallery, I'm going to have, uh, to read a poem about uh, a painting. Uh, it's painted by the Spanish painter Velázquez. Um, when I saw, I think this painting is actually in the Dublin National Gallery. Um, when I saw that painting, it was it's depicting um, the the scene of uh, the road to Emmaus when Jesus um, um, saw two disciples and they and he invited them to dinner. And, but this painting by Velasquez actually focused on the maid who prepared the dinner. And, and when I saw that painting, I thought, God, that like, that maid looks like my mother. <laughs> and This poem is called "My Mother in a Velasquez." You were all blacks in shadows in the kitchen darkness, where off whites were still possible on some plates. The brim of a mortar, a head of garlic sitting next to it, and a jug you seem to have laid your full body weight on, so not to break it, as if breaking it here. In this little town called Emmaus, would trigger something slightly unusual, like the breaking of bread, which you might or might not have seen in the background. 
he was smaller and larger than that, being the one who had the chance to witness and hide away. It was you, wasn't it? Though you're not that African, that worrying look in the shadows of your brows could only have been you, or at least how I or Velasquez would have painted you back in those days, those days cleaning other people's kitchens. I remember singing joyful, joyful, we adore thee in Cantonese, I've learned from a school mass, when the houses were freed of the hosts, when you turned the hoover to full blast. My nose was caustic soda. I sang and sang and sang my heart out. The house came clean. The air was deprived of dust. Thank you.